Kuzu Zampola means hello in Zonka. I am Doji. The blissful people of Bhutan pray to Buddha for your happiness and smooth spiritual journey. Bodhisattva Vimalakirti was a renowned lay disciple and wealthy patron of Shakyamuni Buddha. The name Vimalakirti means pure reputation. It is said that Vimalakirti would often use the pretense of illness as an opportunity to present well-wishing visitors with spiritual teachings. He used and often shared an in-depth understanding of topics such as the path to liberation and the nature of emptiness. His approach was said to enlighten even advanced bodhisattva members of the Buddha's Sangha as well as laypersons. Vimalakirti is a legendary figure of the teaching of Vimalakirti, a scripture that is included among the classic Mahayana Sutras. Supreme Master Ching Hai, on August 15, 2015, in France, spoke about Vimalakirti's wisdom and his eloquence, which surpassed that of many of the Buddha's monks. Uh, in the Buddha's time, there was a person named Vimalakirti. You heard of him? Vimalakirti, right? Yeah. He's a lay person, lay disciple of the Buddha, but his wisdom so high, his attainment is so huge that all the monks are very you know, keeping a uh, uh, distance, respectful distance, because he has such an eloquence and such power that uh, some of the monks cannot match him. The teaching of Vimalakirti highlights the inner truth that is available to everyone, independent of either worldly or spiritual status. The main theme of this scripture is non-duality, a concept especially important in Mahayana Buddhism. Basically, it refers to perception that does not distinguish between self and other. Non-duality also means oneness, as in the unity of the individual soul with God. We will now share with you Chapter 9 of the teaching of Vimalakirti, the Dharma door of non-duality in which Vimalakirti challenges a group of transcendent bodhisattvas to explain how to enter the Dharma door. Then the Lichavi Vimalakirti asked those bodhisattvas, Good sirs, please explain how the bodhisattvas enter the Dharma door of non-duality. The bodhisattva Dharma Vikurvana declared, Noble sir, production and destruction are two. But what is not produced and does not occur cannot be destroyed. Thus, the attainment of the tolerance of the birthlessness of things is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Sri Gupta declared, I and mine are two. If there is no presumption of a self, there will be no possessiveness. Thus, the absence of presumption is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Sri Kuta declared, Defilement and purification are two. When there is thorough knowledge of defilement, there will be no conceit about purification. The path leading to the complete conquest of all conceit is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Sunaksatra declared, Distraction and attention are two. When there is no distraction, there will be no attention, no mentation, and no mental intensity. Thus, the absence of mental intensity is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Subahu declared, Bodhisattva spirit and disciple spirit are two. When both are seen to resemble an illusory spirit, there is no Bodhisattva spirit nor any disciple spirit. Thus, the sameness of natures of spirits 
is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Animisa declared, Grasping and non-grasping are two. What is not grasped is not perceived, and what is not perceived is neither presumed nor repudiated. Thus the inaction and non-involvement of all things is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Sunetra declared, Uniqueness and characterlessness are two. Not to presume or construct something is neither to establish its uniqueness nor to establish its characterlessness. To penetrate the equality of these two is to enter non-duality. The Bodhisattva Pusha declared, Good and evil are two. Seeking neither good nor evil, the understanding of the non-duality of the significant and the meaningless is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Simha declared, Sinfulness and sinlessness are two. By means of the diamond-like wisdom that pierces to the quick, not to be bound or liberated is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Simhamati declared, To say this is impure and that is immaculate makes for duality. One who, attaining equanimity, forms no conception of impurity or immaculateness, yet is not utterly without conception, has equanimity without any attainment of equanimity. He enters the absence of conceptual knots. Thus he enters into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Suhadi Mukta declared, To say this is happiness, and that is misery, is dualism. One who is free of all calculations, through the extreme purity of Gnosis, his mind is aloof, like empty space, and thus he enters into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Narayana declared, To say this is mundane, and that is transcendental, is dualism. This word has the nature of voidness, so there is neither transcendence nor involvement, neither progress nor standstill. Thus, neither to transcend nor to be involved, neither to go nor to stop, this is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Dantamati declared, Life and liberation are dualistic. Having seen the nature of life, one neither belongs to it, nor is one utterly liberated from it. Such understanding is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Prayasadarsa declared, Destructible and indestructible are dualistic. What is destroyed is ultimately destroyed. What is ultimately destroyed does not become destroyed, hence it is called indestructible. What is indestructible is instantaneous, and what is instantaneous is indestructible. The experience of such is called the entrance into the principle of non-duality. The Bodhisattva Samanta Gupta declared, Self and selflessness are dualistic. Since the existence of self cannot be perceived, what is there to be made selfless? Thus. The non-dual vision of their nature is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Vidyudeva declared, Knowledge and ignorance are dualistic. The natures of ignorance and knowledge are the same, for ignorance is undefined, incalculable, and beyond the sphere of thought. The realization of this is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Priyadarsana declared, Matter itself is void. Voidness does not result from the destruction of matter, but the nature of matter is itself voidness. Therefore, to speak of voidness on the one hand, and of matter, or of sensation, or of intellect, or of motivation, or of consciousness on the other, is entirely dualistic. Consciousness itself is voidness. Voidness does not result from the destruction of consciousness, but the nature of consciousness is itself voidness. 
Such understanding of the five compulsive aggregates and the knowledge of them as such by means of gnosis is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Prabhaketu declared, To say that the four main elements are one thing and the etheric space element another is dualistic. The four main elements are themselves the nature of space. The past itself is also the nature of space. The future itself is also the nature of space. Likewise, the present itself is also the nature of space. The gnosis that penetrates the elements in such a way is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Sumati declared, I and form are dualistic. To understand the I correctly and not to have attachment, aversion, or confusion with regard to form, that is called peace. Similarly, ear and sound, nose and smell, tongue and taste, body and touch, and mind and phenomena, all are dualistic. But to know the mind and to be neither attached, averse, nor confused with regard to phenomena, that is called peace. To live in such peace is to enter into non-duality. <laughs>